Hey everyone, I'm John. I collect cards. I uh, hope you're all doing well. It's Tuesday, September 12th. Um, I'm going to take the time in this video to show you my complete set of 1954 Topps Baseball. So I will flip the phone right around and get right to it. All right, well, here's card number one, Ted Williams yeah, in an SGC4. And I'm just going to show these fairly quickly and just sort of show you the whole set. I've never actually done that before, um, and so in case you're, you know, in case you're not super familiar with the set, or there's Monty Irvin and an SGC5 just came back fairly recently, card number three. For me, I put that in an order about a month or so ago. Card number four, Hank Sauer. I won't name every single, you know, Ed Lopat, veteran Yankee pitcher at the time. I won't go through or name every single player on here. Oh, I never took the price tag off this one. I still got to get that one out of a <laughs> change the top loader on this. This is actually on the top loader. I don't know if I actually paid 20 bucks for Ted Kluzewski or not. I may have. Um, it's actually a pretty nice one. Some so, so for some of these, I will take the time and just sort of, you know, maybe point something out. Like here, this one's got a pretty folded corner there, and that's the main reason why I decided, like, after I get done with the Hall of Famers grading of these, which I'm in the process of doing, um, I uh, might grade a few other, like, pretty decent condition cards from this set. And uh, here's my Jackie and an SGC2, card number 10. Maybe I'll sort of trot out the numbers, mention the numbers as I go. Just... Thought I'd take them out today and just uh, kind of show them. So here's a prime example of one that I might send in for grading someday. My Billy Martin's in pretty nice shape, but it's got a little bit of an edge issue right over there. You can sort of see it. Like, I don't think, I really don't think it's trimmed um, because I've measured it and measured it a couple more than once, but it's in really nice shape. So when I get done with the Hall of Famers, which I only have probably about two more submissions maybe where I'll send a few Hall of Famers that I have left, maybe three, um, I might end up sending Billy in for a grade. So we'll see on the fence about him. Giroux, Al Rosen. He was MVP from the previous year in the American League. There's Phil Rizzuto in a 5.5. I thought, uh, you know, with week one of the NFL season now completed, this is actually going to go on my next sub, actually, this Warren Spawn. That's not in great shape, but it needs to get slabbed once and for all. Um, I thought with week one finally coming to an end in the fashion that it did, um, this is a Jet fan talking, by the way. Um, you know what? It just made me a little nostalgic for baseball, I guess, knowing what the probably lies ahead for the Jets after such an interesting summer, spring and summer, I guess you could say, um, and for it to all kind of happen the way it did. There's another card I never took the tag off of. Highly doubt I paid 20 bucks for Ferris Fain, although it's in very nice shape, actually. Um... Maybe, uh, you know, just, you know, with the, the temperatures here in Michigan are actually a little cool this week. Um, you know, we're kind of not getting past 75 or so for the next, like, 10 days. And the, the uh, nights are starting to get into the low 50s. I'm going to slab uh, Eddie Matthews also on my next submission. This also is not in great shape, but I look forward to getting it slabbed. Um, just made me, you know, kind of knowing it's we're in the stretch run of uh, baseball season. Let's make Duke Snyder 4.5. Um, you know, knowing we're getting in the stretch run of baseball season just kind of got me in a little bit of a nostalgic mood today. So, thought I would trot these out, and we'll see how long it takes me to go through these. Here's my uh, SGC5 of White Wilhelm, which I just recently got slabbed. My Whitey Ford, one of my favorite cards in the set. Also on a 5. As you'll see from some of the, you'll see a lot of these, um, um, card savers with this on the back. I got a lot of my singles from Greg Morris as, uh, as I was in the process of building this set. Um, I finished it a little over a year ago in summer of, I think it was August of 2022. Is that a crease on Sean Shermlauer? Actually, no, I think that's on the top loader. I didn't think I'd buy a card with a crease in it. I'm pretty sure they're probably, like I, except for the biggest rookies, which you'll see soon enough, um, I don't have any 
actually, I don't have any poor ones in this. I don't think any of these base cards or, you know, non-Hall of Famers would uh, grade a one. Um, there's Dick Grote, pretty nice shape. So, like, some of these other, like, you know, good name, big name kind of players who aren't in the Hall of Fame, so I'd give them an opportunity to kind of, like, you know, showcase them in this video as well. Uh, and there are only 250 cards in the set, so I figured it might take a reasonable amount of time. There's Richie Ashburn's one of my, probably my, it's actually, I think it is my best Hall of Fame uh, slab in this set at 6.5. It's a really nice one. I don't think any of my other Hall of Famers that I have left would come close to that. Although I do plan on getting the coaches slabbed in this, too, who are in the Hall of Fame, and I believe there are three of them. Um, we've got Heine Manouche, Earl Combs, which is a really cool one to have slab, given he was on the, you know, Murderers Row Yankees teams. Um, and there's Yogi in the four and a half. Really nice card there. Um, and then the other one is Billy Herman, I believe, whose number, I believe, is coming up here pretty soon. I think that was Vic Powers' rookie card. Now I'm in the 50 to 75 range of the set, and this is sort of the short print of the set. There's, they're not really hard to get at all, but they, I believe, printed this batch of 26 cards, uh, 25 cards, in a little bit less of a of a print run compared to the other series. So these are, in terms of singles, probably get a, I don't know, a 10% premium maybe. Over the rest of them, it's really not that much. It's a pretty nice one there. There's Johnny Pesky. Not a bad card, but I remember I overpaid for this one on Greg Morris. I think I paid maybe about 30 for this one, which I was like, eh, I probably didn't need to do that. It is in pretty nice shape though. Swift. Okay, we are on card 67 now. It's about seven minutes in. It's probably run a, between 15 and 20 minutes. So if you're willing to sort of look at some 54 tops cards with me as we go, feel free to stick around. There's Larry Doby. Need to get him slabbed soon, possibly on the next submission. It's in pretty nice shape, actually. I'll take a moment here. Front's pretty nice. Quite nice, actually, but he does have a small wrinkle, which I won't take the time try, time to try to find right now. But there is a small wrinkle on the that's noticeable on the back of that card, which will probably bring it down to probably in the three to four range, which is a little unfortunate. Okay, moving on. Hope your teams uh, did well in week one. This card is one of my weaker ones, I should say, of my um. Uh, of all of my cards, because this one's got some tape stained. For whatever reason, this was one of the last cards I got in the set. It might have been the second to last card I got, and you can see that tape stain right there. Um, I will probably replace this one at some point. I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. But for the most part, um, I kind of have kept, you know, I kept track as I was, you know, get, picking all these up. And there's Ray Boone, real solid player. Great career he had. And obviously a uh, kind of a patriarch of baseball. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so I kept a spreadsheet of, you know, cards I picked up as I got them and sort of did my own. There's Jackie Jensen, another great player from the era. Who was this, this is not a great example. This is probably no, no better than a three. Um, so I won't be getting this one graded. But... Um, I kept, you know, try to give my own guesses to grades on these as I went along. And as I've been getting these back, that's a pretty nice Joe Collins, nice color. Um, they've all pretty consistently been, I'd say, a half point to, I think this might be Bob Turley's rookie card, actually. Uh, and there's Billy Herman. It's actually in pretty nice shape. This one actually could grade pretty well. When I do send it, I'm going to send the coaches in together. Um, it's got a little bit of edge wear there, but this one could be at least a five, I would say. Which is pretty nice. Um, getting close to the end of the first staff here. Um, but uh, overall, I would say my the average uh, is Roy Face. Good, solid career. Awesome career, actually, with the Pirates. And that one's actually, this is a really nice condition card, actually. 
if I were to grade this, it'd probably come back possibly like a six or something. It's a pretty nice shape, really nice shape. Back's good on this one. You know, with SGC at 15 bucks, you know, a pop, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll, uh, if I continue to enjoy grading 54s, maybe I will do something like that someday and grade some of the kind of B-level play, B-level stars, tier two kind of, tier three kind of stars, even if I'm ambitious one, feeling ambitious one time. Uh, Willie Mays in a three. This is one of my first SGC subs I made. Really happy about that one. That it came back at three. Moving along, here's my Ernie Banks rookie. This one's in a fair 1.5. Um, I would say this is probably my worst condition card in the set. Um, my Hank Aaron, that you'll see soon, is also a 1.5, but the corners are in much are much more uh, in existence still. <laughs> this Ernie Banks, though, my Aaron has creases, but this Banks really doesn't have any or many or any. I don't really think it has any creases in it. It's just super, super rounded, um, almost like a playing card. Um, really well worn, and this is the only PSA graded card I have in the whole set. Um, bought this one already slapped. I love it. What I love most about it, in a way, is one of the main things I love about it is that the name and the logo are, are have a decent amount of room from the top, as worn as this thing is, and the picture's still pretty nice. So I think this is a pretty nice 1.5. I love having this one. Okay, that's card 94, Ernie Banks is, so that means we're getting close to 100 here. Joel Black, Dodger pitcher, good pitcher. Keeping on going here. Gene Woodling. That one's in very nice shape, too. Yeah, it's got a little corner nick, but overall it looks pretty nice. The green on this is nice. Okay. I'm just sort of, you know, carefully building stacks as we go. In fact, this one I'm going to move. I got my Gil Hodges there coming up next. We'll start moving these over a little bit. This also this was also a very nice grading result. My Gil Hodges came back in SGC6 recently. Okay, John Lennon, Andy Carey. I will definitely flip through the um, second half of the set faster because the vast majority of the Hall of Famers are in the first half of the set. So we will definitely pick up, be picking up the pace here. But I might still, you know, pause for a few seconds on some. I mean, just, you know, a card like this, it's in pretty nice shape. A little off-center down, but... The average grade, I think I meant to get to this point, the average grade of um, that I have in my spreadsheet as of now, as I change grades to what SGC eventually gave me, I have it averaging out to 3.65 or 3.7. So a VG uh, plus, a firm VG plus, almost a VGEX, you could say. My cat in the background has perked up, so you might be hearing him a little bit. But it was just fun to pick these up as we go. That's card number 125, which means we're halfway done. I'm going to right to the next stack. If you follow 54 tops and you know the set well, well, first off, before we get three cards in, you can see it from behind me. It's card 128. Here's 126, Ben Wade. This is in very, if you have this in very well-centered and well-strong corners, this card's worth a lot. Um, this card is pretty off-center right. And, uh, but the back's pretty nice. That's a decent example, but doesn't uh, doesn't get the soaring values that the sevens or eights or would do for this card. And it's probably just because of where it lies in the set. Card one twenty six probably just had to do with where it lied in the in the um, on the sheet. Okay, and here's Hank Aaron, Henry Aaron Fair one point five. Um, it's a really nice one. I've shown this a couple of times before. You can see there's creases. Pretty prominent creases in all the corners, kind of the quadrants, I kind of call them. Um, and another one, it kind of comes down to about there with some paper loss, but it really, somehow it kind of managed to avoid his, the majority of his face, um, which is one of the reasons I kind of uh, was drawn to this card. The corners are still like very present as well, or for the, well, they're pretty present, I guess you could say. Um, it's not super rounded like the Banks rookie, just a really nice card, a really nice one. For the grade. So now we'll pick up the pace a little bit. Hank Bauer, I have a feeling I would have really liked rooting for this player back in the day. Although back in the day, here's my well, here's my Tommy Lasorda rookie, actually. I'll talk a moment about this. Eventually I will get Lasorda graded. He is a Hall of Famer. 
This is going to be the weirdest of all the subs I do, I would say, among the Hall of Famers when I finally do grade him. Because if you look at this closely, the print, there's some massive printing error. There's a, there was a just, if you see, it's like the letters, especially where it's this picture Brooklyn Dodgers is really shadowed. And so I don't know why I ended up with following through with the auction on this one. I just got caught up in an auction at one point back in 2021. I probably got this in and just picked it up. And so do I regret having this copy? Eh, not really. It's a pretty nice copy, but that printing error is really wacky. Um, so I don't know what this is going to get, what kind of a grade this is going to get. I guess it'll, I'll hope for a three or something. Um, I mean, it presents fine enough, but that printing, that printing is a doozy on it. So, <laughs> Uh, we'll see how it ends up doing at some point. I'm probably going to send... That's probably going to be in as part of the last um, submission I do. There's Wally Moon, his rookie card. I'm at 1545. Let's see if I can get this under 20. There are the O'Brien brothers. There's a classic card from Vintage, just with the two brothers on one card. Such a cool, cool idea to do. So that's just a fun one. flip through this a little more quickly here. This one's pretty bad. So here's an example of a card I'll probably um, look to upgrade at some point because it's just it's a miscut. I'm surprised I ended up following through on that one, frankly. And there's also one card in here <clears throat> that I know is um that I know is uh, trim. I'm almost certain is trimmed. Um, and I'll get to that in a little bit here. I keep plugging away at these. Do you want to show them all? Hope your uh, hope your hobbying has been going well lately. Whether you're selling or buying or going to shows, I'm already a couple of months out from the national. Or yeah, well, a little over a month and a half, I guess, since the national was. And uh, that show was just a lot of fun. So it was uh, it was great to connect with a lot of other content creators. Talk cards, just get to meet people. It was cool. Pick up some really nice ones, see some incredible cards that shows that you're just not going to see, or you, cards you're just not going to see at other shows in a lot of cases. And whether that's, you know, displayed by auction houses or at dealer tables. I saw Johnny Padres a few cards ago. Big Dodger pitchers. Dusty Rhodes. This is his, uh, is it his rookie card? I can't remember if this is Dusty Rhodes' rookie card or not. It might be. So, I'll go back to the Jets here just for a second. Um, you know, they got the Cowboys this coming week. And, uh, you know, now we have number two on our center once again, Zach Wilson. Who knows what to expect at this point this season. Expectations have changed drastically and in ways that, you know, only can change for the Jets. You know, it's probably the most popular YouTube comment of all the videos I've watched from today's, uh, <laughs> today after last night, which was, you know, kind of a, almost like a Jet game like no other, I guess you could say. Here's Earl Combs's uh, card there, coach of the Phillies. Um, was, you know, the, that was the most Jets thing that ever happened to the Jets <laughs> in terms of what happened with Aaron Rodgers. And They'd have a case for that. People that you can make a case for that. There's Heine Manouche. It's a pretty nice card, but it's a little more off center than I remembered seeing. I haven't looked at a lot of these in quite a while, actually. So in that case, it's actually good to just kind of look at them again. I will be going over a little, a little over 20 minutes here. But I wanted to take the time and just sort of give a little bit of camera time to these. I just definitely didn't pay that for this card. So I got some of these singles at Legends also up in Grand Rapids, which is a really pretty well-known um, card shop up there, and they actually had a table at the National. Um, I remember there were probably two or three occasions I made the hour-long drive there, probably picked up five or six singles each time for the set. Kind of, you know, got the uh, little discount to go with it, so I could tell you I probably didn't pay $25 for this card, but it is in pretty nice condition. I got my Richie Ashburn there as well. It's quite possible I got it the same day. There was Schoolboy Row before. Coming up on Mr. Al Kaline. Here he is. Card number 201 and a 3.5. It's a really nice one. Well centered. Really well centered. And the color's nice on it as well. 
So this is the card that I think is most likely trimmed. And so I need to pick up, I need to pick up another Bob Perky at some point. And I think that's the, might be the only one that is like an obvious trim. I'm not going to like sort of measure it up against other ones at the moment here, but, but I'm 90, 99% certain that's got a trim. Why they would trim that card, why anyone would trim a card like that, a common, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm almost certain it is trimmed. All right, we're coming up on nearing the end of the set here, about 30 cards to go. Again, if you're watching this, all of these, I really appreciate you uh, following along with me here as I just kind of flip through my 1954 top set. It's actually kind of cool to just see some of these again. It's been it's been a while since I've taken like them out in mass like this and just sort of like looked at them all. That's a rough one. This one probably needs to be upgraded a little bit too. Okay. We are, that is card number 225. We've got 25 to go. A couple of notables left in our last 25. Bob Kazava, relief pitcher for the Yankees for several years. There's Roy Smalley, his son Roy Smalley, who played in the 70s and 80s for the Twins and Yankees mostly. Vern Law just got his autograph TTM'd recently with Roy Face together on a 61 um, oh, Bucks Pitchers card. It was an awesome double to get there. There's one of the not real notables, Bill Scourin. Moose Scourin, this is his rookie card. Probably won't get it graded, but it's in pretty nice shape. All right, we're in the 240s now. We've got one more slab to look at. And it's a card that's in nice shape, but unfortunately has a big old A on it. There's Al Smith. I believe that might be his rookie card actually as well. I'm not positive of that, but I think it might be. It's in really nice shape. Let me see actually if this is or not. Uh, yeah, I think it is his rookie card, minor league record there. So we got 249. Here's card 250, the bookend, other bookend for Ted Williams. This one, unfortunately, when I sent it in, came back authentic, erased. So there was likely a pencil mark on here at one point, and it got erased. But beyond that, it's a sweet card. Um, but, and, you know, unfortunately, the authentic rating definitely, uh, you know, <laughs> I paid more than what it, what I'd be able to sell it for someday, but um, this is, you know, not really the point there at this point. I don't look at it that way. To me, it's just sort of part of the overall collective of a, you know, pretty nice undertaking. Or it was, The fact that I managed to complete this, I still kind of, a little, I'm a little bit blown away by it, that I was able to make it happen, um, both uh, in terms of endurance to the task and financially. Um, a couple of lucky breaks kind of happened along the way to make it possible. Um, and so, you know, I'm always think, you know, kind of, you know, realizing I was, you know, pretty fortunate to, to follow through, being able to have the opportunity to follow through on that goal. It is pretty special, this set for me. Um, you know, my dad and my grandfather were both New York Giants fans. I've said this a few times. They won the series in 54. You know, my dad talked about going to the polo grounds as a kid many times. Um, before they moved in 58, so or at the end of 57. So, um, you know, once I kind of got back in the hobby in 2020, I just kind of gravitated toward this set and just kind of fell in love with it. So um, it was like my first big, big goal that I've been able to complete since getting back in and, um, you know, working on a couple of others. Um, and we'll see where those go. But um, this was one, a nice one to check off. Um, so that's it for this video. I'm wrapping up here at uh, 24 minutes, so uh, if you made it this far with me, I, I do appreciate that. Thanks for following along. Hope you enjoyed the kind of, uh, you know, running through the set of, a, of one of the all-time classic sets. So with that, take care, and I'll see you around on the next video.